Well, equality newspaper, as you see here, Kimo King, if I'm calling your name correctly, I am here with the Canadian Prime Minister showing off equality newspaper. Mm -hmm. It is the largest national Caribbean Guyanese paper in all Canada. Mm -hmm. And as you may know, we have 39 million um, as the population in Canada. Mm -hmm. I'm here with President um, Irfan Ali, Dr. Irfan Ali, Vice President uh, uh, Jack Deo, Mr. Jack, Dr. Jack Deo, even the Prime Minister here of Guyana, Marx Phillips, Honorable Minister of Finance. Uh, uh, finance and of course Prime Minister Steve Maharpa. It represents 40 years of publishing the largest weekly mm -hmm. newspaper. I'm glad to be associated with this program. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank NCN for this broadcast as our uh, viewers in Canada through Discover Your World and Sons of Asia Television may even have the opportunity to hear this to all Canada too. So having you have to come into your question, I am here to see the platform that is laid out by His Excellency Dr. Irfan Ali and all the heads of states was particularly impressed with um, Prime Minister Mia Motley and also um, Dr. Santoki from Suriname. I believe that Guyana's time is now. Guyana is open for business and um, it's a great time to be in Guyana. What are the messages that they talked about that most resonated with you? Well, all the new developments is too numerous to mention, mm -hmm. but we will carry that in detail in Equality Newspaper at www.equalitynews.ca. I do not want to misquote anyone, Kian. No problem. Because, you know, it's the, the, the readership is online mm -hmm. and also hard copies, right. which is something to be very proud of. 40 years in publication. Again, I wish all Guyana well, and I believe that the media has a very, very important role, especially this one, mm -hmm. NCN. I know Mr. Niaz Suban and, and most of the older professional uh, veteran, uh, veterans of the, 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 the media. And I would like to thank my staff too, to do a good splash and give all the support that they can to the President and the Vice President of this country mm -hmm. and also greetings to all the visiting dig dig uh, dignitaries that are here and I wish you and the station all the well, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Could you tell me a little bit about your business and why you are at the International Energy Conference and Expo? Okay, my name is Dave Naran, as I just said. Um, I'm from Dave West Indian Imports. I am based in New York. Mm -hmm and I export food products out of Guyana to the USA. Um, we are, might be one of the largest exporter of food products out of USA. We happen to be the agent. A few of, few, it, we happen to hold the agency for all the big companies in so Gaisuku and okay. Bihari, Riksasari, and you know, so forth. And, but we also deal with all the local folks that manufacture or produce product. We deal with fish across mm -hmm. the country and and coconut water from Essequibo and everything else. So that's our business. So we take them there to USA and distribute it to all the local stores. And then we have a few retail outlets too. Okay. And why have you come to this conference and expo? Um, I came to the conference to see uh, what are the opportunities in our area in the food food arena. So um, I've been following it. I, we went to Texas uh, a few months ago mm -hmm. at the conference, and uh, then we went to Dubai. So there's a lot of opportunity networking, meeting with different folks there. So. Okay. In the opening ceremony, we had a lot of conversation about sustainability and the management of resources. What were the messages that you were most interested in? What resonated with you? Um, ask back the question. Okay. We saw four heads of state yeah. talk about oil and gas and renewable energy mm -hmm. and moving to net zero. Yeah. We also had the CEO of ExxonMobil, Darren Woods, mm -hmm. talking about ExxonMobil's plan for Guyana. Often, 
in the discussion about oil and gas and net zero, mm -hmm. it seems like these are two opposing forces. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, the question is, what were some of the messages that mm -hmm. were delivered by perhaps our president or other heads of state that you most I agreed would, with? I would talk about our president. Mm -hmm. um, the other head of states, they were very good. And they, of course, the Exxon, um, Bob, um, the Exxon head, he will talk about this oil and um, I listen to him very good. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want. I would. I wouldn't want to comment on him because uh, okay. I feel. I feel that Guyana should gain a little more. But I'm not here for this here. You know. Okay. You know. I feel as a guy and he's living there in yeah. America. And I, I, you know, you would always feel for Guyana. Yes, of course. Um, and so I would want Guyanese mm -hmm. and Guyana to gain a little more. That's okay. all I'm going to say on that. Mm -hmm. I heard my president say, uh, Dr. Irfan Ali said all about what we're going to attain and achieve and what about the billions of credit and, and all these things mm -hmm. that we are worth. And I'm very impressed when this, or sooner or later, when it's going to become a reality. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to, uh, to see a, a new Guyana, our Guyana, uh, becoming in a, uh, because, uh, a new, you know, some saying a new Dubai, but it might take a little time to be a new Dubai, but at least go into a new era. But in order to do that, we would have to get the cooperation of our people too. Mm -hmm. It's not the government alone. Like yeah. uh, I saw the other day, they were cleaning up uh, Guyana, the garbage. They were, mm -hmm. you know, and it will take a lot from the people of Guyana to help too. Okay. So it's it's a lot to do with the heads of the government and what the comments say, but. It also will have to do with our mentality of our people. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we've just had the opening ceremony for the International Energy Conference and Expo Guyana. Mm -hmm. And we've had four high-profile heads of state, mm -hmm. including our president, Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali, making an address. Mm -hmm. We also had the CEO of ExxonMobil Corps, Darren mm -hmm. Woods, talking about ExxonMobil's plans for Guyana. Mm -hmm within the context of the global conversation on sustainability. Mm -hmm. What would you say were the messages that resonated most with you? Well, I, I think it was a balanced um, presentation we, we had this morning from all the speakers, mm -hmm. you know, talking about um, also not only about the fossil fuel, but how to mitigate um, stuff, and also outlining um, the future, what, what's, what's in store. And I think um, right now, um, Guyana is an excited um, part to development and um, you know the, the discussion also centered around how we utilize the resources from oil to help in the other sustainable part of the economy mm -hmm. right okay um, you are the head of the private sector commission mm -hmm. what um, okay we have a lot of local companies that are exhibiting their products and services here mm -hmm. and some of these are members of the private sector commission well i'd say all of them right yes yes could you talk a little bit about the local participation in this expo do you think the, the amount is sufficient do you want to see it increase yeah no i i think the participation was excellent i mean it, it, um, you see both in terms of the exhibit and the attendance at the conference this morning the room was filled. I mean, for if you, you saw the footage from the room, so and, and mm -hmm. there was good participation. I think people um, are excited about what's happening in Guyana. They want to know and learn. I think that this whole exercise, uh, conference is, is would be is an edifying one. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it um, helping us to understand more about what's in store and more about the oil and gas sector. Mm -hmm. um, as we know, I mean, we, we, we are a new player in, the, in, in this field and um, the more information we get, I mean, the better, the more prepared we, we, we will be. And it also would help us to understand the, the opportunities that, that are there that we can um, participate through local content and also, part, I mean, develop ourselves, develop capacity so that going forward, we can participate in, in, in even a bigger way in the oil and gas sector. A major theme in this conference is sustainability mm -hmm. in resource management. 
Would you say the local private sector is doing its part to keep resource management sustainable? Yes. Um, you know, we, 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 we're involved in the new low carbon development strategy. Mm -hmm. I think that, that, that outlines some of the things that we, we will do as a country um, to re remain um, sustainable, I mean, in, in whatever we do. I mean, we know that I mean, we, we're moving towards renewable energies. Mm -hmm. I mean, notwithstanding, we, 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 we're exploring oil. We still, I mean, I know the country would be um, soon starting back to the Amelia Falls project. And I mean, that, 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 that's, I mean, is a good thing. We are also looking to build the agriculture sector, which is a part of the sustainable economy, mm -hmm. agro-processing, and, you know, converting more of our raw materials into more value-added, um, higher-value products. Mm -hmm. In addition to these large-scale mega renewable energy projects and the gas to energy project, would you say that private companies in Guyana are doing their part in terms of, for example, adopting solar energy sources? I see some businesses are putting solar panels on their roofs and mm -hmm. other um, mechanisms like that. Would you say that's being taken up? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it's a practice. I mean, the, 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 we, the private sector, we always look on ways which we can reduce our costs. I mean, yes. uh, re, our, our energy costs are extremely high, mm -hmm. close to 30 US cents yes. per kilowatt. I mean, we comp compare that with it, most of the countries in the region, those that we compete with, it's, it's way above, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the benchmark. And that's one of the reasons why companies will look to go to cheaper sources of energy. Solar is one such over the long run. I mean, you know the initial investment will be uh, high, but over the long run it would, um, would work out. So, um, yes, companies are doing that, but I mean, at the same time, you know, they got, have to look at other areas to, to expand their operations. So, yeah. When the government does bring on these large energy projects, mm -hmm. and if it is successful in bringing the cost of power down, do you think uh, local companies would come back onto the grid who have taken up these um, solar energy options? Well, I mean, well, those with solar, I mean, you know, that, that would be a sunk cost. I mean, they, they would already pay for those things. So the, the energy coming out from, I mean, that, you know, it wouldn't... Um, they won't have a continuous expenditure mm -hmm. on safe and except if they have to renew batteries and so on. But um, as I said, businesses always look at ways in which they can reduce costs, mm -hmm. all right? Be to be more efficient, to be more competitive, uh, because everything you produce, you have to sell, and you have to sell at a, at a, a price which relate to other companies. So the more efficient you are, um, the, the better position you're in. So. You know, once electricity price come down, yes, you know, many of the companies who are using their own generators now, mm -hmm. they will switch to um, to GPL. Once the current is, I mean, clean energy and reliable and, and cheaper, yes, definitely, the, I mean, companies would switch to. And finally, the, uh, judging from the speeches made by some of the heads of state that mm -hmm. you've heard, do you think that the direction in which those nations are going reflects a willingness, just like Guyana is doing, to go in the direction of sustainable management of their resources. Yes, I mean, we heard from the Barbados Prime Minister and, and they, they, they're going in a big way in solar and wind. And also they, 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 they're doing exploration for um, natural gas, mm -hmm. you know, um, energy and looking to get natural gas, which is a, is a cleaner energy than a high uh, fuel oil, heavy fuel oil. Yes. So, um, yes, I mean, it's part of the whole global phenomenon of moving away from um, things that create a lot of carbon and, um, in, in the environment and um, destroy the ozone layer mm -hmm. and, and create climate issues, climate problems. So, I mean, uh, yeah, it's a global phenomenon. All the speakers, yes, indeed, I mean, the, the, their vision is to work towards reducing the, the cost of um, the, the cars. For yes. damaging the environment, we all need. This is everybody business, mm -hmm. and all of us need to play our part in protecting the environment for us and for future generations. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. It's so good to see you. Um, you were at the International Energy Conference and Expo opening ceremony. 
we had four high-profile heads of state who made addresses, and we also had the CEO of ExxonMobil who had a lot to say. What would you say were the messages that resonated most with you? Right. Thank you, Kamal. It's just great to be here. Um, I think the biggest message that I heard mm -hmm. is that uh, it's all about partnership. Yeah. You know, so we had four heads of state speaking about you know sustainable energy, the way forward. We mm -hmm. had the the CEO of Exxon Mobil talking about how they can partner with Guyana and perhaps others in the region on uh, looking at, of course, the oil and gas industry, but more what the oil and gas industry can do for other sectors. Mm -hmm. So the the big biggest message to me was exactly that, what oil and gas can do, um, especially here in Guyana, for many, many different industries, many, many different sectors, and it's all about partnership, partnering with the right other nations, neighboring nations, and uh, right industries. How would you say the diversification agenda of the government is going so far? Well, I think uh, they certainly know the importance of diversification, that uh, if, if um, Guyana is to focus just on one sector, just on oil, uh, that's not sustainable. Oil is a finite resource, mm -hmm. and so it's important that they take this opportunity to fo focus on many other sectors as well, and that includes agriculture, that includes manufacturing, it includes uh, information, communications and technology, services, so many different areas that provide a lot of opportunities for Guyana, mm -hmm. and uh, just speaking from the United States perspective, you know, the, the proximity of Guyana to the U.S., the fact that it's an English-speaking country and is resource-rich provides a lot of opportunities for the U.S. investors here, and you see a lot of them here today. Okay. Thank you. This is a pretty big conference for Guyana. Where would you see, say Guyana's place is in the international conversation on sustainability in the management of natural resources? Well, I think Guyana has entered the global stage and is a big part of that conversation and has a lot to say. I know you have a lot of people here very experienced in, uh, in environmental issues and climate change, and uh, I think their voices will want to be heard mm -hmm. and they will want to ha help shape that future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kamal. Bye-bye. Okay, my name is George Owusu. I'm from Ghana, and uh, I've lived most of my life in Texas, United States, Houston. Mm -hmm. Right, and uh, I've been in the oil and gas industry for a long time, about 25 years. I used to work for Shell Oil, okay. and then I, I took a major company out of Dallas, took them to Ghana uh, in 2004, and in 2007 we made the first major oil discovery in Ghana, uh, the Jubilee Field in Ghana. Mm -hmm. so I was very instrumental in doing that. For people who don't know, tell them a little bit about the Jubilee field and that discovery and the excitement that surrounded it. Sure, okay. Uh, just like Ghana, Ghana was surrounded by several oil producing countries. Nigeria, Nesdo, and Ivory Coast, they all had the oil, but we didn't. And we've been trying to find oil since 1896. Several companies came in and drilled, and they all failed until I brought Cosmos in. And nobody had any faith in it, but God being so good, the first drilling produced 1.2 billion barrels. And uh, with the excitement that came, people thought uh, we're all going to be millionaires the next day. Mm -hmm. We all thought everybody was going to have a lot of money in their pocket. But it's not necessarily so. The oil and gas industry does not employ a lot of people. It employs people with technical knowledge, technical know-how, which at that time Ghana didn't have. Mm -hmm. So that was a little bit of disappointment to a lot of people. But in all, it's helped the country significantly. So uh, the excitement is still there, but it's not as it used to be when the first oil was discovered uh, in 2007. Okay. We've seen in the opening um, ceremony for the conference here, we've had addresses by four high-profile heads of state, including right. the president of Ghana. Yes. What would you say were the messages that resonated most with you? Well, the message actually is the local content. Mm -hmm. uh, the oil industry is highly technical. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said before, we thought things would change drastically. But most people didn't have the knowledge, the wisdom, the technical know-how to be able to work in the industry. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of experts come in to do the work. And we, the locals, were just sitting there watching. Uh, it's a very, I shouldn't say bad, but it was a negative thing for the country yes. of about 30 million people just watching people come from the United States uh, 
London and Australia to do the work whilst we sat there and watch. And I think the message here for Guyanese is <clears throat> get as many of your people trained as quickly as possible. Because the APSO, as you sit here, is brand new. Everything on it is new. Sooner or later, things are going to go mid maintenance. And you know, they're going to bring in people from Houston. Mm -hmm. They fly business class and live in the best hotels, drink the best wine, okay, then go to the field, mm -hmm. do their work, and pay exorbitant prices or uh, salaries and take them home to build castles in Houston. Yes. Whilst you see people are still here poor. Mm -hmm. It's very important to get your people trained. And so what I would do, or what Ghana didn't, uh, we didn't know, my uh, advice is get your people trained. Let's say you have a, I use pump as an example. Bring a pump manufacturing company here. Set up shop here. Train your locals how to fix pump. Because in Ghana, what was happening was that when the pump goes down, they take it all the way to Germany or to UK to fix it and bring it back. Mm -hmm. The cost of transportation and the delay in time was so bad. But if you have the company here in, Ga in Guyana and train your locals, two things happen. One, your local will be trained. Second, the cost will be much, much cheaper yes. for the company and also for Guyana, because we have something called cost recovery. They recover all the costs yes. before they share their profit. And if all the cost is going to the United States, how much profit is there left to share? So it's very important to get as many of your people trained, get them those in the diaspora, bring them in, sound the drum, beat the gong gun, do whatever you can to bring them in, because most of them have training, and they have, may have some expertise which may not be available locally. We need to work very hard on it. Otherwise, people will be building castles overseas, everywhere else, and we still be here. And we don't want that to happen. Right. I think it says a lot that somebody as accomplished as you are, are here. What, um, why are you here? I'm here to share my knowledge, my wisdom, my experience mm -hmm. with my brothers here. Okay. Okay, that's the reason why, and if there's any way I can help, mm -hmm. Uh, because you have some experience which you may not have. We can share that experience. And that's why my president was here, to share the experience we had 10 years ago. Okay, because if you don't, then you fail Guyanese. We want yeah. you to also know mm -hmm. how uh, to work in the industry so that it can benefit. One of the major things that we did which have helped the country, some of the money from the oil, is being used to pay for senior high school free education. They don't have to pay school fees. Yeah. All from the revenue from the world. If you don't manage it right, you may not get the money to be able to do all the good things we are thinking about doing. Okay. We've had a bit of a tussle in uh, media discourse in Guyana about yeah. what to do with the oil money. Um, the government wants to spend it on infrastructure. Some people say raise salaries now, raise. Um, make cash transfers and give people subsidies. What do you think? No, I, I, I don't believe in subsidies and giving people cash. Mm -hmm. You have to work for it. Yeah. I would rather spend the money in training mm -hmm. so that they, their income level will go up. Mm -hmm. If you are a welder and you don't have any training and you are trained and you get certified, automatically your pay goes up. Yes. Instead of sitting at home and get, getting paid, it doesn't make sense to me. So train, if you have to send them overseas for training, fine. If you have to bring trainers here to train them, fine. Mm -hmm. But whatever you do, when you improve the quality of the person, his skill set, he'll be able to make the money. And so just sitting down and somebody giving you money. Teach somebody how to fish, the whole problem. Some, teach the person how to fish. And when you teach him, he do, do the fishing himself. Mm -hmm. So put the money in his pocket. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Hey, you're welcome, sir. Tell us a little bit about your company and its involvement in the International Energy Expo. All right. Thank you. So first, my name is Abbas Hamid. I'm the Chief Financial Officer Director of Vitality. Mm -hmm. Vitality is a Guyanese company uh, with Guyanese values. And, you know, we, we truly represent, you know, what it means to be a Guyanese. And at this International um, Energy Conference, you know, it's important for us to be present here to showcase what the skills 
and the assets and resources that are present here in Guyana. Yes. And, you know, it really speaks volume as to why the, it was necessary for, you know, the Local Content Act, which was passed recently. Okay. Because, you know, as Guyanese, we truly <laughs> believe and trust in our abilities. So at this conference, you know, it's given us an opportunity to represent Guyana. It's given us the opportunity to network with, with mm -hmm. international uh, partners. And, you know, the pres I remember the president said a few nights ago at an event that the Local Content Act is not to keep outsiders out, but it's to really give Guyanese an opportunity to form strong strategic partnership with, with investors, with foreign companies, so that it will be beneficial for all Guyanese. Okay, and there is a role for international companies in Ghana's local content framework. The government has encouraged international companies to partner with um, locals. Have you uh, made any of those partnerships so far that you would like to talk about? Yeah, so Vitality has, uh, for the past year, uh, um, since our launch, we have been reaching out to partners in Trinidad mm -hmm. and the United States, and we have already formed strategic partnership. Mm -hmm. um, out of the U.S., we've formed a partnership with a uh, publicly listed um, technology company, Alexa, and, and now at, the, at this energy conference, it's actually a soft launch of a partnership we formed with a Trinidadian company, Monar Industrial, okay. which is, you know, I would say one of the top uh, you know, plant company, fabrication specialized welding company out of Trinidad mm -hmm. with number two um, health and safety ranking from Trinidad. And so it's important for us to form these partnerships so that we can bring those necessary skills and values here to Guyana, safety values especially, and we can transfer those to the Guyanese in keeping with the Local Content Act. You know, when I'm having conversation with our partner and they all believe that, you know, this resource that Guyana is blessed with should be should be beneficial to the Guyanese people, and they believe in the co local content act as well. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. You represent the largest democracy in the world's involvement in a significant unfolding in Ghana's history. Mm -hmm. This conference represents a lot for Ghana because it it centers it on the global stage in the conversation on sustainability, in the development of natural resources. Yep. What would you say were the messages that resonated the most with you from the opening ceremony? Uh, you know, uh, people talk about this conference being an oil and gas conference. Mm -hmm. I don't see it as an oil and gas conference. I see it as an energy conference, yes. which it truly is actually. You know, we are looking at not only alternatives uh, for oil and gas, mm -hmm. Uh, we are looking at uh, renewables, we are looking at, you know, uh, gas to power, yes. many other, uh, uh, you know, alternatives. The overall uh, overarching message that I found in the opening session by all the dignitaries was the call for prevention of climate change, how to dovetail all the efforts which are being done to extract oil in Guyana, mm -hmm. to make it suitable for a net zero action plan for the world. Yes. And I think, uh, uh, as someone mentioned in the morning, we had two big champions of the world, of the earth, if I may say so, right. uh, Dr. Bharat Jagdev and uh, Prime Minister Mia Motley. The two uh, people in that room who were known for their active discourse, active uh, uh, action against climate change. And we saw their uh, forceful propounding of their cause, uh, both in COP26 and in this uh, morning session. And also, I think the presence of the President of Guyana and the President of Ghana, uh, along with the President of Suriname, it added to the past, the present and the future of the oil industry. Mm -hmm. Ghana has already had those experiences and I think uh, they have some valuable lessons to share in the oil industry. And I was speaking to some delegates yesterday evening at the dinner. Uh, they accepted, quite frankly, that they had some issues, some mistakes during their development which they are now correcting. And I think they said that it, it was the right time to interact with Guyana to share their best practices and to avoid the mistakes. And, and seeing what uh, President uh, Irfan Ali is uh, uh, doing, and uh, one of the most proactive presidents I've ever seen, uh, a technocrat, if I may call so. And, and uh, his uh, uh, speech contained what the investors wanted to hear. I think his... Uh, ex 
expounding of the virtues of being in Guyana. Yes. Uh, and also uh, the later on speaker spoke about the way Guyana has been, you know, handling the decision making. Uh, like someone said that if it was some other country, they could have expected a lot of uh, barriers for investment or, and, and some time consuming uh, uh, nature of things which would have delayed the production. But I think Guyana seems to have done well according to the speakers today morning. Could you tell me a little bit about India's part? What part is India playing in the global effort toward net zero? Uh, you know, India's uh, role has been very active. Mm -hmm. uh, many people don't know that we also produce oil. Uh, okay. We are number 21 or 23 in the global oil producers list. But by the sheer consumption, our demand is such that we cannot fulfill our demands through our own produce production. So we import about more than 80% of our oil from uh, abroad. And that is where uh, India is looking forward to collaborate with Guyana mm -hmm. in, in uh, you know, trying to get Guyana's share of oil on a long-term contract. But apart that, apart from that, you know, what my Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, has been actively propounding is to increase the share of renewable energy in our energy mix mm -hmm. uh, by this year and 2022 we would have reached 40% of our energy mix would be renewables. Okay. It would be hydel, it would be uh, solar, wind, biomass, etc. And uh, uh, India's uh, production capacity of the solar photovoltaic equipment, etc. has increased tremendously because we have given a lot of uh, uh, incentives to the uh, producers, the manufacturers. So the per unit cost of production of electricity in India in under renewables, under the solar especially, has been going down drastically. Okay. Uh, India is now home to one of the biggest solar parks in the world. And uh, uh, the commitment of India towards net zero, uh, you know, India has already achieved the Paris commitments nine years ahead of schedule. Okay. And by 2070, we will be a net zero country. Uh, even though we will be like, what, 17% of the world population, we will be contributing only about 6 or 7% of the emissions, mm -hmm. which is huge. Yes. And, and, and uh, the uh, International Solar Alliance, which has been uh, formed, which is an international organization uh, which was uh, formed about three or four years ago by Prime Minister Modi and the former French president, has now gained hum a huge traction, if I may say so, over 102 countries, yes. including the many of the Caribbean nations, USA, France, uh, UK, etc. They are all members now. Yes. And, and they are building a technology uh, front at the same time, they are working towards building a $1 trillion fund by 2030 to help those countries in the tropical regions to migrate their energy production towards solar. Mm -hmm. So, uh, along with these efforts, uh, the uh, in investment of about $60 billion US dollars by India into the energy infrastructure is being made to produce clean energy. So, the in terms of scale of investment itself, uh, yes. What India is doing is something unparalleled in the world. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, Minister. Um, we had the opening ceremony for the International Energy Conference and Expo today. We had some high-profile heads of state, including ours, and the chief executive officer of ExxonMobil making addresses. What would you say were the mo most vibrant messages that resonated with you? One is what President Ali said. Guyana is open for business. Mm -hmm. Guyana's prosperity means regional prosperity. The success that we may have in oil and gas mm -hmm. is not purely for oil and gas, but is to boost other sectors uh, for development in Guyana. Mm -hmm. We are committed to our low carbon um, strategy. Oil and gas does not remove us from our commitments to net zero, it is a necessary investment. It will be done in a sustainable manner. We are committed to transparency in the sector. We're going to follow the rules. We're going to partner with the best. And we're going to try and do the best for Guyana. So those messages were very strong. The government has stressed the need for investing the proceeds from Guyana's oil extraction into the development of its infrastructure. Why is that so important as opposed to calls being made by some sections of society to use the money to give public servants 
much higher salaries or subsidies or transfers? Before oil and gas, mm -hmm. significant interventions were being made in the social sectors. On an annualized basis, about 30% mm -hmm. of total budget allocations have always gone to social services. We could increase that. Yes. But you can eat all of your earnings. Mm -hmm. If not, you remain poor for the rest of your life. Yes. We have to develop and create the framework to elevate the people out of poverty. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, when we were in Parliament, you can't eat roads, but roads make you eat. Yes. We have to be able to create that framework. And those who are making such suggestions, it's not that they care about public servants mm -hmm. or they care about the poor, because they were in government. What did they do for public servants? The same people who are talking about doubling and giving this to the pensioners, in five years, they give the pensioners $7,000. In 18 months, we give the pensioners $8,000. Right. So it's not, it's not care for the poor, it's cheap politics. Okay. Guyana's development must be done in a sustainable manner. We must elevate the welfare of the vulnerable. We must take care of those who need help, but we must create that framework. It's not just charity, but there must be opportunities. Okay. And I think strong in this conference today was the opportunities that exist and the partnerships that you could come in and invest and work with us for the, for the building of Guyana. Okay. Guyana is fighting climate change, but it can't do it alone. Would you say that the addresses made by the other heads of state of Suriname, Ghana, Barbados, reflect a willingness on their part too to put in the same effort that Guyana is putting? Definitely, definitely. I think it was brilliant. Ghana's president made the case very clear. Mm -hmm. um, Prime Minister Motley was more stronger, I would say, up front yes. um, and, and, and where we are going. Suriname that we have been in, engaging with, they are committed and President Santoki was very clear. And I believe this is representative of what you'll be hearing from world leaders around the world okay. uh, as we deal with the issue of sustainable development in the context of oil and gas, dealing with the issues of climate change, securing the planet's future, it has to be done in a coordinated, sustainable way. Mm -hmm. And I think our world leaders, including our own president, they are sensible in mm -hmm. their approach. You know, I think it was Minister Charles Ramson who said it during the debates, and I hope yeah. Guyanese heard it. Everybody might be talking now about Norway and the model. Yes. Of, of Norway. Norway had 25 years when they didn't save any money, mm -hmm. but they just developed their country. Right. They're now a great leader. The United States, other parts of the world, they have developed their countries, and we are now faced with this great crisis. China and the others have developed. And we have now faced with this crisis about climate change. Should we be allowed to be the ones suffering? President started his address today yes. by indicating 87% of Guyana's lands still have standing forests. Right. The contribution that we're making to the whole world, our storage capacity, the carbon services that we could provide. So it would be improper for the extremists, the adventurous, and those who are unwilling to support production of in our oil and gas sector to say that we will be doing damage to the environment because of what we are doing when we have been setting an example in that regard. So okay. I think the argument is clear and we just got to get on with it. Okay. Thank you, Minister. Thanks. We've had four high-profile heads of state and the CEO of ExxonMobil yeah. who are making addresses this morning. Yeah. Um, what would you say were the messages that resonated the most with you? Well, I can tell you from the heads of state address, the three foreign heads of state, uh, I think there's a, the message is clear that mm -hmm. um, with the global issue of climate change and developing fossil um, in tandem with that, mm -hmm. that countries like Guyana, Suriname, um, 
Barbados as well as Ghana, they had um, a position where this, you know, the legitimate right of the people of those countries, including Guyana, to develop fossil in tandem with meeting uh, the international target of 1.5 degrees uh, Celsius temperature cap is something that can, we can go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And I believe that was the message that was clear this morning from, from those uh, speakers. But in addition to that, our, our president, President Ali and Vice President Jali, made it clear on, on how we intend to manage the resource and develop the resource in a sustainable way, in a low carbon way. So that the, you know, the pathway that we take, it's a mix of energy solution that will, um, that will be beneficial to Guyana monetarily, mm -hmm. as well as maintaining that track of, of a net carbon sink. Mm -hmm. Gu Guyana's been a carbon sink and we intend to remain so. And I think that that message was clear this morning. Um, President Ali did use the opportunity to, to let all the participants be aware that we're not just a country with one sector. Yeah. The sector, the oil and gas sector resources, once it flow into um, the economy, is to diversify the economy to areas that we need to develop for job creation, the job, we call the job intensive sectors, mm -hmm. as well as the other productive sectors. So I think those were the key messages coming out from his Excellency President Ali's speech, as well as Vice President Jagdio, also Honorable Pre um, Mayor Motley and President Santoki um, did uh, allude to the same kind of uh, you know uh, message, but one of great cooperation was in the year as well. Every mm -hmm. single leader spoke about cooperating with each other so that the peoples of each country can benefit okay. mutually too. While this, pro this um, conference is ongoing, we saw some protesters out, I think it was on Water Street. Yeah. Some of the themes that they raised were renegotiation of the oil contract with ExxonMobil mm -hmm. and insurance against disasters. How mm -hmm. does the government treat with these issues? Well, uh, all I'm going to say to that is that, you know, when people protest is a reflection of a vibrant democracy. Mm -hmm. People have a voice, they can go yes. and protest. That's all I can say about that. Right now, what I want to concentrate on, and what our government is concentrating on, is making sure that this is a successful um, conference, mm -hmm. that we meet with foreign investors, that people come here to invest, they come to do business, that we are facilitating as much as possible and we are accessible to them. So I want to concentrate on the positive, right. rather than you know what uh, they were protesting about. Everybody have a legitimate view, and that view is reflected in any form that they see, uh, uh, you know, that serve their purpose, whether it's protest, whether it's put it in a newspaper, whether it's go on TV or on the Facebook, whatever they do to get their word out, uh, that's part of a vibrant democracy, something that we uh, fight for and mm -hmm. we continue to try to, to build a vibrant democracy. So everybody got to do the thing. It's Guyana. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. What did you think about the opening ceremony for this conference so far? Well, the, over, the opening ceremony for the conference was phenomenal mm -hmm. um, because, of course, we had four phenomenal speakers. But most, but most importantly, the fact that um, Prime Minister Motley and President Ali's speech were very much in sync mm -hmm. in terms of what the developmental pathway is going to look like. I could not be more excited uh, to be here in this very important moment of Guyana's pivotal development yes. and I was very enthused um, by all the speakers but more so by Prime Minister Motley and President Ali and of course we just heard Pres uh, Vice President Jagdio mm -hmm. and of course you know all that he had to say was very relevant in terms of energy, the environment, local content and expectations. What were the messages that most resonated with you that they spoke about? The message that most resonated with me as a middle-aged Guyanese mm -hmm. is how much young Guyanese, such as yourself, yes. my kids, um, have leaders that care about them in national development and the creation of opportunity for all Guyanese of all ages and all um, you know backgrounds. But most especially, what, what resonated with me deeply 
was here is a Guyana that will deliver the potential that I've heard about for five decades mm -hmm. and you guys will have to make the most out of it. So that for me was a very, very powerful moment. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it right now actually, yes. you know. You have been an advocate on a lot of environmental issues. Oftentimes activists like yourself may seem anti-oil or anti-industrial um, development. Would you care to shed some light on just where you stand? So for me as an environmentalist, my environmental career um, started in the 80s, mm -hmm. um, uh, actually 90s. And when I founded the Guyana Marine Conservation Society in 2000, um, I was very much doing a lot of my environmental work with the administration at the time. Mm -hmm. It was um, through partnerships with the focal ministries of our Marine Affairs, of um, uh, local government, uh, with the President Jack Dio's um, subsequent leadership that really shaped my environmental, um, you know, pathway. And I've always been um, very open-minded to environmentally responsible development mm -hmm. because in my earlier life um, as a young environmentalist, I have come across incredibly in, in the indescribable, uh, indes indescribable poverty so I have never been about, you know, no, 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 um, no development, no um, oil and gas, for example. Mm -hmm. I'm always been yes, 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 for environmentally responsible development. Yes. Because I realized that, you know, we can't just wish um, employment opportunities or development to our impoverished masses, especially. We have to create it. And, you know, God has blessed Guyana with so much natural resources. And now we have, you know, visionary leadership that is going to ensure those resources are done, um, are developed in an in a environmentally responsible manner. And again, alluding back to the Vice President's speech in the terms of you know, our natural resources and oil and gas and its role in our future development and the balance that is going to come with that as well. So for me as an environmentalist, what am I doing here at an energy conference? Yes. I'm here listening to what my leaders are saying what I'm going to hold them accountable to. Yes. Listen to what the um, oil and gas CEOs, CEOs are going to be um, you know, speaking about, calling out any public relations um, insincerity. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, that's how we have to be involved in terms of shaping the environmental conversation and being part of it, not to stand on the outside and be negative about everything. Right. And the beautiful thing about our present administration is that we actually have leaders that care, mm -hmm. leaders that listen, yes. and leaders that have a very embracing uh, approach with NGOs such as mine and others that I know of as well. So we could not want to have better partners to shape the environmental agenda as well. Okay, thank you so much. You're more, more than welcome and stay safe. You too. All right.